The 19th century American West, a sprawling tapestry of shifting borders and dynamic cultures, was an epoch of monumental change and collision of civilizations. In the 1860s, a chapter of this expansive history was inscribed by a woman named Fanny Kelly. Born in 1845 in Canada and migrating to the United States in her early childhood, Fanny became an emblematic figure representing the many complexities of frontier life. But what led her to such notoriety? During a family journey westward in 1864, fate took a turn when Fanny was captured by the Oglala Sioux near present-day Wyoming. Her subsequent five-month captivity became a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and a first-hand account of Native American life during a period of intense conflict and mutual distrust. When we hear her story, several pivotal questions stand out. What were the day-to-day -day realities for a white captive among the Sioux? How do Fanny's interactions with her captors shed light on the larger socio-political dynamics of the era? And how did her eventual release and return to white society influence the discourse on Native American relations? Fanny Kelly was a 19th century woman best known for her book on the harrowing experiences and captivity after being captured by the Oglala Sioux during the Western Indian Wars. Her story provides a poignant personal perspective into the complex realities of frontier life and the often volatile interactions between Native American tribes and the encroaching European-American settlers. Born in 1845 in Canada, Fanny Wiggins moved to the United States with her family when she was quite young. They settled in Kansas, a territory at the forefront of westward expansion and the tensions it brought. In 1864, Fanny, now married to Josiah Kelly, embarked on a westward journey to Idaho Territory with a small group. However, their journey took a tragic turn when they were ambushed by a band of Odlala Sioux warriors. Most of the party was killed, but Fanny, along with her niece and another young woman, were taken captive. The ensuing months were fraught with challenges. Fanny faced the complexities of life within the tribe, which was deeply divided on how to treat her. While some showed her kindness, others were hostile considering her an emblem of the relentless westward push that threatened their way of life. On a bright autumn morning, Fanny Kelly found herself walking along the fringes of the dense woods near the Sioux camp where she was held captive. The air was crisp and the rustling leaves hinted at the change of seasons. Despite her unfortunate circumstances, she took solace in the beauty of nature. During this time, the Sioux camp was abuzz with the arrival of an outsider. Among the sea of familiar faces, one stood out, known to the tribe but not part of it. He was Porcupine, an Indian emissary known for his ties with multiple tribes and some white settlers. With sharp features and eyes that seemed to pierce through one's soul, Porcupine carried with him an air of mystique. Rumors had it that he was named not just for the animal, but for his cunning nature, prickly demeanor and the ability to navigate thorny situations with ease. Word reached Captain Marshall, a stalwart figure leading a small group of settlers and soldiers in the vicinity, that Fanny Kelly was being held captive in the Sioux camp. Fanny's capture had caused quite a stir, with many believing she would never be seen again. Yet, Captain Marshall, who had once benefited from Porcupine's intermediation in a past dispute, believed that he might be the key to Fanny's safe return. Under the guise of a trade meeting, Captain Marshall managed to get an audience with Porcupine. He presented with him an offer, a hefty bounty of goods, firearms, and even a promise of land rights in exchange for his assistance in ensuring Fanny's safe return. Porcupine, ever the shrewd negotiator, listened intently, his face betraying no emotion, but his mind weighing the risk and rewards. Agreeing to the terms set by Captain Marshall, Porcupine assured him of his influence with the Sioux tribe and his ability to facilitate Fanny's release. With a firm handshake, the deal was sealed, and Captain Marshall returned to his camp, hopeful and relieved. However, as days turned into weeks, Porcupine's assurance began to ring hollow. Instead of working towards Fanny's release, it became evident that he was exploiting the situation for his gain, amassing more goods from both parties. 
Porcupine played a dangerous game, sowing seeds of distrust within the Sioux camp regarding Fanny's presence, all while assuring Captain Marshall that her release was imminent. Or was it? Comment below to what you think the answer is. Life in captivity was a far cry from Fanny's earlier existence. Every dawn greeted her not with hope, but with a sense of impending dread. She was constantly reminded of her outsider status, treated more like an object to showcase the tribe's power over the European settlers than as a human being. The mundane realities of her day-to-day -day existence included odious tasks such as drawing water from sources that were sometimes miles away, manually grinding maize, a stable in the soup diet, and sewing and repairing garments. Fanny was treated less as a hostage and more as a possession, a token of the tribe's dominance over the outsiders. The stark difference in lifestyle, diet, and culture made her days challenging. Her chores were labor-intensive, ranging from fetching waters from distant streams, grinding maize, preparing meals, to mending clothes. Each day was marked by physical exhaustion, coupled with the emotional torment of being away from her loved ones. The tribe's food was different from what she was accustomed to, the reliance on game, berries, and foraged goods often led her palate longing for familiar tastes. Furthermore, the language barrier deepened her isolation, making communication a Herculean task. Not all interactions with the tribe were hostile. The young betrothed bride of the chief, a woman of grace and beauty named Lila, became a beacon of solace for Fanny. Their initial encounters were marked by curiosity with Lila intrigued by Fanny's foreign appearance and ways. Over time, an unlikely friendship blossomed. Lila, although betrothed to the tribe's formidable chief, carried her own burdens and understood the weight of societal expectations. Their shared experiences as women in patriarchal settings provided common ground. Through gestures, shared chores, and broken communication, Lila taught Fanny some of the tribe's customs while Fanny reciprocated with tales and songs from her homeland. Yet, amidst these moments of connection, Fanny's heart ached for freedom. Every rustle of the leaves, every distant sound felt like an opportunity to escape. But the tribe was vigilant. Any sign of her restlessness was met with suspicion. Her movements were constantly monitored, making the very thought of escape seem impossible. Word spread that Fanny had been sending subtle signals to nearby settlers or troops. Whether this was true or mere conjecture, it added another layer of mistrust. The tribe began to see her not just as a captive, but as a potential threat, an informant who could bring danger upon them. On one occasion, Fanny almost succeeded. Using a piece of sharp stone, she managed to cut her bindings and, under the cover of night, began her silent trek towards what she believed was the direction of a nearby settlement. But fate wasn't on her side. Her absence was noticed just before dawn, and trackers were dispatched immediately. By mid-morning, she was back in the tribe's clutches, her failed attempt earning her strict surveillance and the tribe's further disdain. However, freedom remained an elusive dream for Fanny. Captives often faced close scrutiny, and escape attempts were perilous undertakings. Rumors abounded. Some say Fanny tried signaling to US Army troops or nearby settlers. And while there are accounts of her attempted escapes, one thing was certain. Her every move was watched, every whisper noted. In one particular heartrending episode, leveraging the vast landscapes of the Great Plains, Fanny tried to flee using the stars as her guide. But the Odlala Sioux were master trackers, attuned to the slightest disturbance in nature. They soon recaptured her, which only tightened the shackles of her confinement. As outlined in Fanny's book, Narratives of My Captivity Among the Sioux Indians, in the summer of 1849, the Great Plains bore witness to a devastating cholera outbreak. Many settlers and Native Americans alike fell victims to this unforgiving disease. Among the affected was a wagon train, where almost everyone succumbed to the illness. Amid the tragic scene of loss and death, a small, scared little girl, her blue eyes teary from the recent death of her parents, caught the attention of Black Bear, a young Sioux warrior. Black Bear, moved by a mix of compassion and intrigue, decided to take the little girl with him, sparing her from the gruesome fate 
of being left alone amid the deceased. To the Sioux, such actions weren't uncommon. Children, being the most vulnerable, were often integrated into tribes, either out of mercy or as tokens of conquest. Life among the Sioux was initially challenging for the young girl. Stripped away from everything familiar, she faced language barriers, cultural differences, and the overwhelming knowledge of her family's demise. However, as time passed, her resilience shone through. The tribe, including Black Bear, became protective of her, and she grew up embracing Sioux traditions, language, and the ways of life. Years melted away, and the once little girl had now transformed into a young woman. The bond she shared with Black Bear, her rescuer, had grown deeper over the years. They were no longer just the savior and the saved, but two souls intertwined by destiny. Their bond culminated in marriage, making an incredible transition for the girl who had once been a stranger in a foreign land. The union was symbolic, a testament to the human spirit's capacity to adapt, heal, and find love amidst the harshest circumstances. During her captivity, Fanny's sense of isolation often made her yearn for any semblance of her past life. This yearning was momentarily quenched when she crossed paths with Charles Sylvester. Like her, Charles had been taken captive, torn from his family in Quincy, Illinois. Their first encounter was one of disbelief. To find another white captive amidst the vast tribal lands was nothing short of miraculous. They shared stories of their past, their memories of home, and their individual experiences among the Sioux. Charles recounted tales of his abduction, the longing for his family, and the intricate dance of survival he had to perform daily. In kind of similar to that of Sarah Larimer, but we'll get to that later. Let's talk about the bigger picture first. The circumstances that led to Fanny Kelly's capture by the Sioux and her subsequent experience among them are deeply embedded in the intricate tapestry of 19th century American history. At the core, the Sioux's decision to capture and keep Fanny was multifaceted. On one hand, captives like Fanny were viewed as strategic assets. During a time marked by heightened tensions and violent confrontations between native tribes and white settlers, as well as the US military, having a captive could potentially serve as a bargaining chip for negotiations or in exchange for tribal members imprisoned by the US forces. Cultural differences, while pronounced, were not insurmountable barriers. Fanny, coming from a background deeply influenced by European norms, would have found many Sioux practices and beliefs alien. However, both societies shared universal themes of family, survival, and tradition. The way in which stories were shared, children were raised, and day-to-day -day life was navigated had parallels, even if the specifics were different. One cannot discuss Fanny's time among the Sioux without touching upon the role of women in Sioux society. Contrary to many preconceived notions, Sioux women were not merely passive figures. They held significant roles as caregivers, artisans, and sometimes spiritual leaders. Their influence was both subtle and pronounced, shaping family dynamics, tribal decisions, and cultural traditions. Fanny's experiences would have required her to understand and, to some degree, navigate the intricate web of female influence and power. While her status as a captive undoubtedly posed myriad challenges, it also offered her a unique vantage point, allowing her a closer look into the lives of Sioux women and the societal structures they inhabited. Now, coming back to Fanny Kelly and Sarah Larimer. Fanny Kelly and Sarah Larimer both suffered the grievous ordeal of being captured by Native American tribes during a tumultuous time in American history. The tales of white women being abducted by Native Americans became central narratives in the expansive American West, often fueling further animosity between settlers and indigenous populations. Both women were forcibly taken from their travel parties. The sudden and brutal separation from their loved ones was a shared trauma, embedding a sense of loss and isolation deep within them. The day-to-day -day lives of Fanny and Sarah within the tribes bore several similarities. They both had to navigate the complexities of tribal culture, including efforts to assimilate to survive. Their captivities were marked by periods of intense hardship, from forced labor to dealing with suspicions and hostilities from certain tribe members. Both Fanny and Sarah were eventually rescued, leading them back to white civilization. 
Their returns were met with a mixture of awe, pity, and curiosity by the contemporaries. The tales of their abductions and subsequent lives among the tribes were eagerly consumed by a public fascinated and horrified by such narratives. While their shared experiences might have been a foundation for camaraderie, the aftermath of their rescues took a different turn. The tribulations Fanny underwent during her captivity were profound, and their echoes did not simply fade away upon her return to her own society. Like soldiers returning from war or any individual having undergone a traumatic experience, Fanny faced the daunting task of reintegrating into a community that, while familiar, now felt alien in many respects. The world had moved on in her absence, and she was left with the heavy burden of reconciling her traumatic experiences with the expectations of a society that could never truly understand what she had endured. Recognizing the power of her story, and perhaps as a form of catharsis, Fanny made the decision to document her experiences in a book. Her narrative was not just a recounting of personal ordeals, but also served as a window into the world that many of her contemporaries were curious about, yet deeply ignorant of. The detailed descriptions of Sioux culture, their practices, beliefs, and the complexities of their societal structures offered a nuanced perspective that went beyond the often one-dimensional portrayals of Native Americans in mainstream media of the time. Fanny's narrative had a lasting impact, serving as an invaluable resource in understanding the nuanced dynamics between Native Americans and white settlers during that turbulent period. At a time when relations were often painted in broad strokes of conflict and mistrust, Fanny's account highlighted the humanity on both sides. While it detailed the hardships and cruelty she faced, it also showcased moments of compassion, understanding, and shared humanity. Her story underscored the fact that the historical narrative of Native American and white relations was not just black and white, but a complex mosaic of grays, rich with shared experiences, mutual curiosities, misunderstandings, and, above all, the universal human pursuit of survival and belonging. Fanny Kelly's harrowing experiences offer more than just a tale of survival. They provide a poignant lens through which we can view the intricate web of relations between Native Americans and white settlers during a pivotal moment in American history. Through her eyes, we witness the complexities of human nature, ranging from cruelty to compassion, and the inherent challenges of navigating cultural divides. But beyond the trials and traumas, Fanny's narrative serves as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, the transformative power of understanding, and the profound impact of shared stories. As we reflect on her story and its implications, it's crucial to remember that history is a rich tapestry woven from countless individual threads.